Welcome back to the enchanting world of Mushoku Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation. In this recap of Season 2 Part 1, we delve into the intricate tapestry of Rudeus Greyrat's journey, filled with adventure, discovery, and heartfelt moments. I have also made it Season 1 Recap, so you can also check that out, and now let's get started. In the wake of Eris leaving him, a deeply depressed Rudeus continues his search for Zenith by traveling to the remote Northlands. Needing to earn money to continue his travels, he reluctantly agrees to join the party Counter Arrow, consisting of frontline fighters Suzanne and Patrice, Mage Timothy, Healer Mimir, and Archer Sarah. However, Sarah is mistrustful of Rudeus, and he finds himself comparing her to Eris in his head. He accompanies Counter Arrow on a quest to slay Grizzlies, but the situation escalates when the party becomes surrounded by them. Witnessing the Counter Arrow members fighting for their lives, Rudeus regains the motivation to continue living and helps the party fight off the Grizzlies. Upon returning to town, Rudeus is accepted as a member of Counter Arrow. After realizing that he has not lost everything and still has friends and family like Roxy to count on, Rudeus burns the lock of Eris's hair he had as a keepsake. Several months pass, and Rudeus builds his fame and reputation in the Northlands, hoping that word of his exploits will reach Zenith or that someone will know her whereabouts. He decides to accompany Counter Arrow on another quest to collect Snowdrake scales, but he accidentally runs into another party, Stepped Leader, who are out to hunt the Snowdrakes. Despite this setback, Counter Arrow successfully completes the quest and returns to town, where Sarah convinces Rudeus to join their victory celebration. However, during the celebration, the leader of Stepped Leader, Soldat, goes on a drunken rant, revealing that Rudeus, whom he can tell is holding back his true power, irritates him badly. The next day, Rudeus learns that Mimir has been killed and Sarah has gone missing during a quest, with the rest of Counter Arrow being forced to retreat due to a blizzard. He heads into the nearby forest alone, recovers Mimir's remains, and rescues Sarah. After being thanked profusely by Sarah and Counter Arrow, Rudeus feels a sense of catharsis and regains more of his lost emotions. After the rescue, Sarah gets closer to Rudeus, eventually deciding to ask him out on a date. Later that night, Sarah flirts with Rudeus and indicates that she is willing to have sex with him. Unfortunately for Rudeus, he discovers he is suffering from erectile dysfunction, which causes a disappointed Sarah to leave afterward. An embarrassed Rudeus tries to drink away his sorrows and ends up venting his feelings to Soldat. Soldat, figuring that Rudeus's issues lay with his lingering subconscious feelings for Eris, agrees to help Rudeus. He takes Rudeus to a local brothel where one of the prostitutes, Elise, also fails to arouse him. She theorizes that Rudeus cannot feel passion because he fears rejection from women. On the way home, a frustrated, drunk Rudeus goes on a rant, declaring that he dislikes Sarah and finds her ugly. Sarah overhears his tirade. Angrily confronting him, she slaps Rudeus, telling him she never wants to see him again before leaving. With his depression freshly renewed, Rudeus almost immediately tries to commit suicide. But Soldat, quickly appraising Rudeus's despair, stops him and offers to bring him along to clear a labyrinth in the Duchy of Neris. Meanwhile, Elinalis, who has been searching for Rudeus, learns he has gone to the Northlands. Rudeus spends the next two years adventuring with Soldat's party, eventually culminating in him slaying a red dragon single-handedly. Shortly after, Elinalis finally catches up with Rudeus and informs him that Paul and Roxy have already set off to the labyrinth city of Rapa to find Zenith. In the meantime, Rudeus decides to stay in the Northlands until winter passes before traveling to Rapa himself. He quickly finds out about Elinalis's promiscuity. Sometime later, Rudeus receives a letter from the Renoa University of Magic, inviting him to attend as a special student due to his recent exploits. Rudeus is intrigued, but is inclined to find Zenith first. 
That night, Rudeus encounters the human god in his dreams again, with the human god advising him to enroll at the university and investigate the teleportation disaster there, promising him that doing so will cure his erectile dysfunction. This persuades Rudeus to accept the university's invitation, and with Elinalis following, he journeys to Renoa, where Silphi, Ariel, Cliff, and Zenoba are students at the same university he is set to attend. Rudeus arrives at the university, where his ability to cast spells silently is tested in a mock duel against another silent caster, a boy named Fitz, who, unbeknownst to Rudeus, is Silphi in disguise. Rudeus easily defeats Fitz and is accepted as a student along with Ellen Elise. After attending a speech by Ariel, who is the student council president, Rudeus attends his homeroom class. There, he reunites with Zenoba and meets some of his fellow classmates, Guise's daughter Linia de Doldia, Beast Girl Persina, and self-proclaimed magical genius Cliff Grimoire, who tells him he knows Rudeus because of Eris. He also learns Fitz is part of his class, but rarely attends. After a brief encounter with Fitz, Rudeus meets Luke, who reveals he is also a grey rat and Rudeus' cousin. Later, while Rudeus is on his way back to his dorm, Fitz accidentally drops Ariel's panties from a window above him. When Rudeus catches them, the female students angrily confront him, accusing him of having stolen them. The dorm teacher attempts to punish him, but Fitz arrives to defend Rudeus, forcing the teacher and the mob to stand down by threatening them with violence and injury. Fitz apologizes for getting Rudeus into trouble, but Rudeus thanks Fitz for helping him, and Fitz decides to tease Rudeus by not telling him her true identity. Rudeus begins to get used to school life in the university, where he studies magic he lacks experience in, as well as researches the cause of the teleportation disaster alongside Fitz. However, Rudeus begins to realize he may have a crush on Fitz, much to his confusion since he still believes Fitz is male. Meanwhile, he also attempts to teach Zenoba how to create his own sculptures, but his own lack of magic capacity and his super strength prevent him from being able to sculpt. Fitz suggests that Zenoba purchase a slave who can create sculptures for him. Rudeus, Fitz, and Zenoba then travel to the local slave market and purchase a young dwarf girl they name Julie. Afterward, Rudeus begins tutoring Julie to teach her magic and general skills while she acts as Zenoba's servant. As Silphy gets used to school life with Rudeus back in her life, she begins to realize that she may have romantic feelings for him. One month after Zenoba purchased Julie, Rudeus has been able to teach her basic magic as well as how to cast without incantations. However, when Zenoba shows Julie Rudeus's sculpture of Rougierd, Rudeus asks about the sculpture of Roxy that he had also made. Zenoba is forced to admit that in his first year, he lost a duel to Linia and Persena, who destroyed the sculpture. Angered at this slight against Roxy, Rudeus defeats Linia and Persena in a fight and confines them in his room, but leaves them tied up for so long that they wet themselves, forcing him to clean them up. He then consults with Fitz on the best way to punish them without creating a grudge, and Fitz comes up with the idea to prank the Beast Girls by forcing them to wear embarrassing face markings for one day. Linia and Persina leave with a grudging respect for Rudeus after learning he trained under Ghislaine, and Rudeus spends some time alone with Fitz. Fitz considers removing her sunglasses to show Rudeus her face, but decides against it. Cliff approaches Rudeus one day and asks him to introduce him to Elinalis, whom he has developed a crush on. Rudeus goes through with the introduction but Elinalise privately reminds him the curse that forces her to sleep with men won't be fulfilled if she's dedicated to a single partner. Rudeus advises her to turn down Cliff's feelings, but the next day, he is shocked to see that both she and Cliff are in a genuine relationship, with Cliff promising to find a way to lift the curse. Later, the beastmen of the school begin challenging Rudeus for the right to marry Linia and Persena, having been misled by the Beast Girls that he is their pack leader. However, the Beastmen are all defeated by the Demon King Badigadi, the fiancé of Kishirika, who challenges Rudeus to a duel after hearing Kishirika's praise of him. 
Rudeus wins the duel by wounding Badigadi with his first attack, convincing the demon king to concede. When winter arrives, Rudeus and his classmates are surprised when they discover that Badigadi has enrolled in the university and joined their class. Fitz wants to reveal her true identity to Rudeus, but fears he might have forgotten her. She gets encouraged by Ariel's approval. Meanwhile, Rudeus continues to study teleportation and sees many similarities to summoning magic. Fitz suggests Rudeus consult with a summoning specialist, Silent Seven Star, but is shocked to discover it is Nana Hoshi and faints after reliving the trauma of his death at Orsted's hands. Fitz revives Rudeus, and Nana Hoshi shows Rudeus two Japanese names, Shinohara Akito and Kuroki Satoshi, and asks if either of those names belongs to him. Rudeus doesn't recognize the names and comes to the realization that Nana Hoshi is a person from his own world. Nana Hoshi removes her mask and formally introduces herself as Nana Hoshi Shizuka, and Rudeus notes she resembles the high school girl he died attempting to save. However, Nana Hoshi wants to find a way back to their world, while Rudeus wants to stay. She explains that unlike Rudeus, who was reincarnated as a child, she was summoned to the fantasy world as she is now, five years ago, though she hasn't aged since. Orsted found her and took her under his care, and she has been studying summoning magic ever since, though she lacks mana capacity and cannot cast magic herself. She makes a deal with Rudeus, where he will use his mana to assist her in her experiments in return for her knowledge about teleportation. She further explains that the mass teleportation disaster was possibly a side effect of the spell that summoned her to the fantasy world. On the way back, Fitz is glad to hear Rudeus has no romantic feelings for Nana Hoshi. Fitz continues to feel jealous that Rudeus spends most of his time assisting in Nana Hoshi's experiments, but remains too afraid to reveal her identity to him. One year after enrolling in the university, Rudeus notices that the other students are in awe of him thanks to the reputation he had built up from defeating Fitz, Linnea, Persena, and Badigadi, but he turns down suggestions to take a leadership role. Later, he receives an invitation from Soldat to attend a clan reunion. After meeting Fitz again in town and the library, Rudeus realizes that he has romantic feelings for Fitz and begins to have doubts that Fitz is male. During another meeting in the library, Fitz accidentally falls on top of Rudeus, and he confirms that she is, in fact, female. Fitz flees in embarrassment, and Rudeus realizes that, for a brief moment, he felt an erection. Knowing Fitz's true sex and that she holds the key to curing his impotence, Rudeus decides to start a relationship with her. With Fitz's secret now known to Rudeus, Ariel pressures her to reveal her identity to him. However, Fitz is still uncertain if Rudeus remembers her as Sylphie, so Ariel and Luke devise a plan to help jog Rudeus' memory. Later, Fitz invites Rudeus to accompany her to gather a rare flower deep in the forest, despite it being the middle of winter. Rudeus agrees, and the pair travel into the forest. Fitz then secretly casts a spell to cause it to rain, soaking both her and Rudeus before they can reach shelter inside a cave. Rudeus strips off his wet clothes to avoid hypothermia and advises Fitz to do the same. But Fitz insists that Rudeus strip her instead. Rudeus complies and recognizes her as Sylphie, much to her relief. Now properly reunited with Rudeus, Sylphie admits she has fallen in love with him. Rudeus admits he loves Sylphie as well, but to his dismay he cannot make love to her since his impotence still isn't fully cured. Sylphie reports back to Ariel and Luke, with Luke agreeing to help Sylphie find a cure for Rudeus's impotence out of sympathy for him. Luke gifts Sylphie a rare and powerful aphrodisiac that should counter Rudeus's impotence, while Ariel provides some advice on how to seduce him. Sylphie meets Rudeus later that night, and they both imbibe the aphrodisiac, which helps push them to make love. The next morning, after realizing that Sylphie hasn't abandoned him, Rudeus experiences an emotional catharsis, overcomes the trauma caused by Eris leaving him, and is cured of his impotence. Rudeus then thanks Ariel for her help by pledging his loyalty to her, and then asks for Sylphie's hand in marriage, which she accepts. 
Ariel releases Sylphie from her obligation to disguise herself as Fitz and accepts Rudius as part of her inner circle. Sylphie then thanks Ariel and Luke for everything they've done for her. As we bid farewell to Season 2 Part 1 of Mushoku Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation, we're left with a tantalizing anticipation for the adventures that lie ahead. Stay tuned for more exhilarating twists and turns as Rudeus' journey unfolds in Season 2 Part 2. Until then, may the magic of Mushoku Tensei linger in your hearts.